Welcome to Actor Roki, set in the world of Chaldea, right here on Gen Con TV, broadcasting to you 6 p.m. Pacific time on Wednesdays. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this Actor Roki episode is a script reading. Uh, this is a script reading that was written as a adaptation of the story created at an RPG session one week ago, uh, run by Mike Boozer, with an illustrious cast of players who, um, most of whom weren't there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but um, we had um, ex excellent substitutes, and the vibe for the session was the animals have taken over the zoo. Okay, and so a week from, uh, and also this week, in addition to doing this script read, we are pr uh, recording actors on film. Well, it's digitally on film, uh, right here in Caldea Studios. I guess the green screen so that we can edit this together into a beautiful, masterpieceful <laughs> movie. <laughs> what do you what's so funny about that? <laughs> <laughs> and we will add sound effects, we will add uh, narration, we will add amazing illustrations from Tanel Love It. And uh, it, it's going to look great. It's, yeah. you, it, it will look fantastic. I, I mean, for what you paid, uh, it'll, look, <laughs> it'll look great. Uh, so, this is episode three of a new series called Graver's Dig, actor rookie series. And we are, let's see, what else do you need to know? On social media, you can follow us at World of Chaldea, also uh, Gen Con TV. And I would like to introduce you now to our amazing cast of actors who are all like, none of them are missing. They're all here. And uh, so I'm going to start with you, Jesse. And yeah. And, I'm Jesse Keeter, and I'm playing Tenacious, and I'm playing him well. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to tell people where they can find you on the internet, if you are uh, you know, into that uh, sort of at thing. At Jesse Lee Keeter on Twitter. Perfect. You sure I about this, think this time? I gotta check. <laughs> Maybe just add Jesse Keeter. If you want me, you'll find me. <laughs> there you go. All right, Andy, top that. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. <laughs> I'm Andy Doporowski, and I'll be playing Archibald. You can follow me at YLF Andy on everything, pretty much, for the most part. My name is Malia Woodley, and you can find me on Instagram at Malia Woodley. Who are you playing? And I'm playing Bahati. Awesome. Hi, I'm Sarah Moore. You can find me all over the internet at Pixies and Pins, and you can find me uh, on this channel, Gen Con TV, on Friday nights at Sarah's Table. Uh, at 5 p.m. Pacific, and tonight I will be playing Beatrice the Sword and Natasha the Barkeep. Hi, I'm Ann Carlton, and I'm playing Searsha, and you can stalk me on Instagram if you want at Ann Carlton Fantasia. Hello, my name is Dylan Smith. I be, will be playing Cass, and you can find me uh, at Path of the Smith on Instagram. Excellent. All right. Well, very good. Thank you all for joining us. Let's get to it. Um, I will read the action text and you guys will read your lines. All right, there we go. Okay, exterior, the Fay Cemetery, day. A chameleon lizard sunbathes lazily on a tombstone. A gentle human hand slowly caresses its crest and is gone. The wizard, known today as Tenacious, paces eager and impatient in an infinity symbol pattern looping around two Tombstones. Title card, The Fay Cemetery. The lizard suddenly shifts the color of gray stone and disappears, startled by four zombies stumble awkwardly near. Hey, boss, ma'am. 
Archibald plops down on a memorial and wipes his sweaty brow. It's hot as the devil. Report. Be quick about it. Did you find anything of interest? We found ourselves in the right sticky situation. For which we should be paid double. Twice alive. Can you imagine? Can you manage that? Uh-huh. And uh, how would that work? Use some of that fade dry oct you're famous for. Bankroll a couple of bonus lives. You survived. Since you were here and apparently no worse for wear. Only because of that uh, annoying kid you sent. Uh, what's his name? Who? Billy the Kid. Th that's right, Billy the Kid. I still think you led us into that trap. Trap? Giant bloody spiders? That's what? We were poisoned and cocooned. Uh, I, I, I wasn't. Was too. It was not. Close on, tenacious, arms crossed, feigning interest as the nearly departed. <laughs> departed? De departed? <laughs> With the departed. Departed. <laughs> departed. Departed. <laughs> yeah, they escaped. Yeah, yeah. As, they, as they launch into their verbal after action report, we watch a time lapse of tenacious, painfully enduring, endless minutia as bits of vocal information fade in and out. So everybody should be prepared to uh, just make up a whole bunch of minutia here that we can just slip mm. right in here, right? Is that you too much to ask? You are completely cocooned. Don't even try and pretend you weren't. Who cut you out of that cocoon? Sorry, I'm making no, up stuff. You're doing it right now. I was thinking tomorrow night, but <laughs> okay. that's it. <laughs> I'm so ready. Yeah, you're so ready. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I'll, so. I'll save a little. Yeah, yeah, there you go. All right, uh, we're, but we are to, uh, we are to you with their line 22. Okay. Well, some kind of freaky flesh monster. A shit shack, a literal shit shack. Shack. A basement liar? The, the, the decor had a pagan sophistication. We found a body made of skeletons. All there except the skull. Tenacious's eyes glaze over and zones out. Tenacious's POV, zombies jibber jabber. <laughs> Fast cuts between Archibald, Bahati, Cass, and Circe, who pantomime absurd zombie. Jom Zesters, yeah. <laughs> as intelligible dialogue shifts to guttural moans and groans. Stupid talking, stupid talking sword. Snap. What? What sword? Sersha whips out the ridiculous plastic blade, slapping tenacious playfully about the chest and arms. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be fun. On guard, introduce yourself. Hello, bonjour, I am Beatrice. Beatrice Bon de la Plagerise, Port Laureate, Officer of the Library of Toulouse in MLUs. That's very unimpressive. I am <laughs> that merry wanderer of the night. I just to Oberon and make him smile when I, a fat and bean-fed horse, beguile neighing in likeness of a filly foal. You get that from Orthifab? No, not directly per se. More like um, a five finger discount. We couldn't risk the sword giving away our secret to the witch. I'm not. She's a mouth breather, you know. I am lonely. It doesn't mean that I am alone. It means I do not have the proper company. She said thing. We can't risk Orthy Fob <laughs> getting that skull, but I have a plan. Insert map of Graver's Dig. Somewhere in Graver's Dig is a shovel. Oh, a magic shovel? Yes. A wondrous item. <laughs> this this thing? No, that's a tunnel terror. Mm. Archibald taps his finger on the Graver's Dig title treatment. This shovel here with the skeletal hand, is that where the shovel is? Fay Wizard, he's an exasperated son. No, that is the shovel. It covers 10 acres at least. Probably built by giants. Graver's Dig is named after this shovel. It's a real shovel. How big is that thing? I mean, that's like, what, three leagues long? You are brain dead. That's a stylized logo treatment. Created by a wonderfully talented cartographer who illustrated the map. <laughs> Fates can move mountains, but don't be surprised if destiny hands you a shovel. Do you know something? Oh, come on, spill it, Beatrice. Maybe if we give her cheese and wine. What if I serenade you while you eat and drink? You are quite a mighty fine blade indeed, Beatrice. Beatrice, the mightiest of blades. Suddenly the world comes alive with magical raucous applause. Everyone looks, searching for the loud but invisible audience. Every 
everything dropped away and there was was the music. Bravo, monsieur. Oh, that was wonderful. Uh, what about the shovel? Once upon a time, I fed upon the marrows that these gravers did. Take me to those Axion streets and perhaps, perchance, my memories will awaken. <sighs> Exterior, Gravers Dig, day. Our heroes walk the main streets of Gravers Dig, taking in the exotic sights and sounds as Tenacious's disembodied voice explains the plan. It's an enchanted shovel. Gravedigger by design. Properly activated, it'll lead you to any dead thing you can name. And, and, if rumors be true, it can locate anything it's ever buried. Rumors are as dumb as the people who believe them, and as fake as the people who start them. Does she narrate everything? Yes. <laughs> That's everybody, by the way. That's okay. Yeah. Um, I will speak for all. <laughs> <That> was, <laughs> I was braced for it. Like everybody's gonna say yes. No, nope, just stand. All right, okay, all right. Noted, noted. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, no worries. I'll figure it out. Uh, one day. It wasn't highlighted. I, I, can't I know. See it. I know. It wasn't highlighted. I'm, highlighted. I'm sorry. My my fault. I should have highlighted We're it. We're actors. <laughs> uh -oh. We're literally paid not to think for ourselves. Was, that, was I was I supposed to read the script? No, no, <laughs> no. no. Okay, our heroes stop, huddle around the map, heads down, considering. Where first? We could use that Billy Kid right about now, huh? Plenty to shovel in this one horse hell, and ain't gonna be easy. You mean like that? All heads rise following his finger. The skeletal shovel hangs on sign. Well, Welcome to Graver's Dig. That was easy. What about that one? Head swivel across the thoroughfare. Graver's Dig Emporium graces the side of a large commercial center. Three homeless kids dart past. The tallest lad wears a shirt, reads, Graver's Dig, know what's below before you dig. <laughs> the nearly departed stand back to back, heads turning, necks careening. The world comes alive with golden shovels as if illuminated by fairy fire. The shovel is prominently displayed on signs made into travel souvenirs and whimsical shotskis. Insert collage of shovel souvenirs illustrated by Tanel Lovett. <laughs> Uh, how do I say this word again? Fecan. Yeah, yeah, that was okay. good. Yeah, fecan. Fecan. I, yeah. I say carefully, don't curse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the hardest thing I've ever done in my career. <laughs> fecan on you. It's like finding a shovel at a farmer's convention. Beatrice, you have any insight? Archibald cooks, uh, coaxes Sersha out of the street. Careful, having an open conversation with a sentient sword. They move discreetly to a nearby building. Information, not a poem would be nice. No, no, it's a poem or nothing. <laughs> that wasn't a poem. <laughs> a, a couple of towners passing by look and then sniff and lift their noses disapprovingly. Cass loots awkwardly with his ladle, forcing a tight grin. We are drawing the wrong kind of attention. The Great Mahat Pyramid within a maze, a twisted grid. Ancient rulers inside are hid from mortals' plain sight. People stop, watch, and listen. Do something. Behold! Cast the ventriloquist of Crass! Cass stumbles into the center of unwanted attention. He gulps, raises his hand, projecting bravado, lip syncs. Yet many still dare explore the inside of this land of yours. So venture on, prop up that door, and travel through the dark of night. People toss casino chips at his feet. Hmm. Cass yanks Archibald this time to oh, okay. a group hug. <laughs> Can we sheath her mouth, please? I beg. Sersha tries to sheath Beatrice, but the blade just won't go, dragging Sersha in an erratic dance-like circle. Cut in there! No! I can get in there. The sword definitely has a mind of its own. I will not be ignored. Uh, people are looking. Indeed, people are looking. Bahati waves, grinning like an idiot. 
This map shows a pyramid. You think that's what she's referring to? Deep within the pyramid brig, a tomb under Graver's dig. Cass looks around, scanning the streets and pyramids. Huh, I wonder where the pyramid is. A Targonian man in monk robes suddenly stops and points. It's across from the shopping district in the main drag. Can't miss it. Much obliged, friend. Oh, a foul funk catches in the monk's nose and throat and coughs. And there are bunkhouses on the green if you desire a bath. What's he trying to say? <laughs> I don't have a nose. Exterior, the Pyramid Bar Day. An elaborate Ma'at stone pyramid juts up in the middle of town, a monument to the gods for which it was constructed. The temple turned tavern, doing a brisk lucrative trade by the multitudes coming and going. Wait, I remember this place. I signed its heretic's wall. Heretic's wall? That sounds ominous. Oh, well, after the emperor was killed, Brickwina said, screw you to the priest of Set. Kill them and turn their holy ground into a grave or old house. <laughs> Folks can show solidarity by signing her heretic's wall. Beware of God's throwing bones. Beatrice, you said something about lifting the door in a dark hallway? I shall gladly repeat the verse. Can we wait for a more secluded spot? No! The show must go on. <laughs> <laughs> Mulan rude. <laughs> I authorize you to put that in there. Uh, they rush the door, her voice trailing, drowned out by the heightened energy pulsing from inside the pyramid bar interior. Continuous. A concussive concussion. Concussion. Hmm. A concoction concussive. <laughs> uh, Steve is some like sound, the there were sounds, uh, exotic <laughs> smoky flavor, and the immensity <laughs> of ancient stone assault the newcomer. Now you know why it takes me so many to get my narration done. Mm. <laughs> it's loud enough to wake the dead. Ironic, given the pyramids are the glorification of life after death. The cavernous innards of the once sacred Temple of Set is crammed with boozy hunters, graver fortune seekers, <laughs> and beer swilling barflies. Who is up for day drinking? <laughs> Do you think the undead can get a buzz? <laughs> <laughs> the tavern hostess, the pyramid <laughs> alewife, busy delivering drinks, gives the newcomers a scant once over before motioning with a head jerk to an empty table. By the way, we're going to have a lovely piece of art of you, um, Malia. For this, you yeah. remember, remember playing the maid? Well, yeah, but I, I didn't see that her that yeah. she had like come back in. So yeah, yeah, we didn't have any lines. That way, you don't cool, have to change cool. change costumes. But yeah, we're gonna, yeah. Have, <laughs> we're, gonna have, we're gonna have a piece of art of you motioning. <laughs> cool. The four follow the nod to Natasha Shmernoff, Russian, <laughs> somewhere in her middle medieval middle years, clears a shabby. Heavily weapon scarred. <laughs> I cannot read today. You got it, you got Somebody's it. Somebody's also going to have to read my lines. All right. Okay. <laughs> help, help. Save me, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> well, aren't we ever upper class high society? Asserting that's well, not real. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I think you're right. The warlock plops into a rustic chair as the others follow suit. God's gift to a ballroom notoriety. The two perform a bodacious Bill and Ted air guitar riff that you too. Oh, everybody did it. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not going to read that. You guys are just going to do it. What is your pleasure? We have strict rules against hunters bringing in dead prizes. The nearly departed don't deign a response. Oh, may we still sign the heretics wall for a potion? The new heretics are always welcome. Beware of the pyramid curse. It don't take kindly to cheaters signing Twice. Uh, once is good enough for me. Mine is up there. Welcome back, heretic. Today's drink menu is dwarf on the rocks, sweet venom, the barking ale, and my favorite, the drowsel sour. Ooh, drowsel sour, please. Cass, Bahati, and Archibald place a drink order before running off to sign the wall. Any food? We oui, breed them all if you have it. Roquefort Munster paired with seared scallops, duck confit, and baked cauliflower. Yes, cheers! Uh, Roquefort, Munster, uh, uh, anything moldy. We are used to gray version shenanigans and your toys. Not problems, see? Yeah, I ain't no problems here. <laughs> and wine, mademoiselle, Bordeaux Rouge, a fruity Pinot Noir. You need to learn when to shut up. You need to learn when to give me wine. <sighs> mm. 
a few minutes later. The newly minted heretics return to the table. Three potion vials, stoppers color-coded, suddenly and quite magically shimmer solid upon the table. Never Natasha <laughs> arrives with drinks and cheese. Wine and cheese is all I need. Everyone oh. at once mimic a singing troupe performing voice warm-ups, humming tongue trills, <laughs> vocal styles. Natasha's eyes narrow warily as she places the drinks around the table, leaving the wine goblet for last. And wine for your invisible companion. In wine, there is truth. Again, the nearly departed launch into four part harmony vocal slides. <laughs> I've seen everything and now I've heard it. <laughs> <clears throat> she pivots and is gone. Cheese, if you please, and wine. Oh, you've been a very bad sword. Share food and drink. And I will share ancient secrets. I know thusly about such pyramids. Mm. I never had children. <laughs> You've been here before. Oh, wee wee wee, it is in my memory lock. Fahadi pushes the cheese across the table. Eat mm. and spill it. Sersha cuts into the cheese as Cass mm -hmm. pours the goblet over Beatrice. Speak up! Oh, stinky, I love you! Nearby table's turn. Cass holds up the goblet. I can't drink this pig swill. Oh, true apothecary. Thy drugs are quick. Thus, with a kiss, I die. <gasps> the sword drops from Circe's hand, dead on the table. Everyone stares, leaning close to inspect the sword. Is she dead? Cass pokes it nervously. Good night! Good night, the party is such sweet song. <laughs> Ow! Shien, behave or I'm gonna return you to Arthie Bob's cellar. Oh no, but that will you do. Don't throw me in the briar patch. Get a candle. Let's see if she melts. Oh! So the thanks I get for establishing a bit of culture. Beatrice! Hi. You wish access to the catacombs, we go through the secret door in the wine barrel. Heads swivel, searching, eyes yearning, hopeful. There are no lack of wine barrels in this place. Small, medium, large, stacked around the perimeter. Which ones? Sersha's arm comes alive, possessed by the sword. Beatrice points at the Largest wine barrel in the room. Legrand. How do you know this? In the prime of my youth. B before you were the sword? In love we forgive, but we never forget. No house rules. No more Beatrice questions. Mm. That's not nice. We need a plan. There are too many down people. We can't just search the bar for secret tunnels. Why not? Hey, everyone, we found a secret door. Duh, wonder what's behind it. Follow me, lead. I will <laughs> hypnotize the dirty masses with poetry renowned. Why the hell would we do that? Oh, why, of course, to reenact the classic diversionary tactic, eh? <laughs> While they worship and adore me, you slip in and steal the king's jewels. <sighs> Shit, that's actually a good idea. <laughs> If you would, but stop and listen. Much knowledge and experience possess our own. Okay, but we can't just fondle the wine barrel's bunghole searching for the postern. Um, pardon the pun, but we'll be seen. If only you couldn't be seen, like, oh, I don't know, an invisibility potion? Maybe one of these? We, oui, Monsieur Warlock. <laughs> but it's fuzzy navel, baby. It's all on the table. What? Read the table! Everyone leans close, scours the table, reading. Don't ask about the tables. Okay. Holy smokes, little... what is this accent? Oh my god. I just came from somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, possessed you. I can't believe it. All the potions are here listed by color. But of course. Well, that's convenient. The gray cork is invisibility. 
Quaff the potion, monsieur, and fondle le bunghole. I think I know what she has in mind. Mm. Moments later, yes. on stage, Cass stands on stage. Beatrice, gripped firmly in hand. Attention! Today and only today, Cass the Crass Ventriloquist. The volume in the bar lessens as people learn. Turn to the stage. Follow my lead. Beatrice speaks loud and clear as Cass attempts to lip sync. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time, and all our yesterdays have lighted fools. With all eyes on the stage, Archibald uses sleight of hand on the bunghole. Click! A secret postern door opens a crack. Archibald enters from the rear oh, no. into a dark, stinky passage. <laughs> <laughs> we really do apologize for all the lowbrow bunghole cracks and inappropriate innuendo. At least it's not a minotaur with diarrhea. <laughs> this Back time. to the show. <laughs> Cersei and Bahati motion to Cass, indicating the barrel. Come on. Time to go. In a wonderland they lie, dreaming as the days go by, dreaming as the summers die. The ground shakes, the bar rattles, a deep groan grows, a green dragon enters the main door. Suddenly, all the oxygen is sucked from the room. Dragon! <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> so, Leo, I told you it'd either be me or Andy would say it. <laughs> the bar explodes into chaos. Thank you. Bar, the bar explodes into chaos. Mayhem, hysteria, screams, gravers, and hunters alike attack the dragon. Inside the dark barrel, complete darkness, we can hear the roar of a dragon and a tumult of battle. And that, my friends, is a wrap. I'm not going to lie, Beatrice, that was top shelf. Now what? We confront rats. Oh my gods. There are mummies in here. Interior, pyramid, ma'at, catacombs, dark hallway. The smooth subterranean tunnel angles sloping down. The nearly dead with heightened undead senses slide slowly past ma'at statues and detailed hieroglyph etched walls. Inside the catacomb maze, continuous, claustrophobic, tight hallways widen into larger parlors, antechambers, and finally, ornate halls. Further inside Pyramid Ma'at catacombs, the ossuary, continuous. The main ossuary is a finely crafted dome gallery, undisturbed by the passage of time or thieving gravers. In the center rests a golden sarcophagus covered in Intricate inlaid hieroglyphs. Ah, oh, it's a masterpiece. Oh, Beatrice, what do you know of this place? Who rests here? My bow, Flesh Beaumont. Oh, was he a noble, a king? Flesh Beaumont is hardly a Ma'at name. No, no, we were cursed apart. Is he the shovel? The shovel? Uh, no, the shovel is of no consequence. <gasps> Did you use us to find your bow? Wait, you said the two of you oh. were cursed. Is he a long bow? That kind of bow? Whatever, let's just get this shit over with, hmm? Huh? Crack this thing open. Is your bow inside the sarcophagus, Beatrice? We. Oui. Archibald is right. I'm gonna open it. What if it's cursed? We are walking curses. He double taps the sarcophagus lid with his ladle. Open sesame. <laughs> the lid? Grinds slowly open. A shovel, uh, everyone slowly leans, and peering inside. A shovel-wielding mummy leaps out. Oh. Youthful and spry, not at all old and decrepit as one might expect. Oh, 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 it. Oh, you I hate it. it. Ouch. Oh. Sorry. Yes, boy. See, you might be actors, but you learn. <laughs> ah, that was great. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Even without the highlighted. Okay. The speed and ferociousness of the attack captures the nearly departed off guard and flat footed. Uh, I, black, one, belie one black diseased skeletal hand tears deep into cast, <gasps> ripping flesh from bone. <laughs> 
Wow. Oh, he reacts geez. with his rapier, but it's as useless <laughs> as a pin attacking a pin cushion. Pound it! The Kelp Warrior leaps in, stabbing with her halberd. On Archibald, he slowly pulls a wand from his inner pocket, like Clint Eastwood drawing a pearl-gripped six-shooter. He grins at the camera, putting a finger to his lips. I'm invisible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, th this, right. <laughs> Interior, Caldea Studios, interview suite. Archibald stands casually in front of a Graver's Dig logo, <laughs> slapping a wand into his open palm. See this wand? Billy the Kid found it in Orthu Vob's house. <laughs> he gives it a flick and a whirl, studies its fine craftsmanship. We didn't mention it earlier because we were hurried, short on time. Beatrice receives all the limelight. It's in her contract. <laughs> Billy tossed it aside, so I, uh, I picked it up. It's a wand of... Back to mummy fight. Firebolt! Yeah, baby! <laughs> <laughs> a bolt of fire careens into the mummy. Nice, nice. Whoosh, kaboom. Whoosh, Turning the mummy into a ragging, uh, no, raging inferno. Oh, He'll... burn, baby, burn. Over the earth. Disco, Disco inferno. inferno. Burn, burn that mummy down. <laughs> 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 nice. Hey, okay, don't stop close up on Malia right there. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta listen to that song and uh, hear, the, hear the chorus. So. Everyone leaps in, hacking and slashing. <laughs> Saoirse thrusts with her halberd. Chas with his ladle of bluntness. Mahadi with her shalala-infused staff. Okay. The Lord of the Crypt rises, shovel raised. Its dead eyes pulsing red turn on Archibald. <laughs> there we go. The accursed mummy levels a dreadful glare burrowing into the warlock's psyche. Nay, his very soul. Amidst the clatter and din of the burning bandages, nothing happens. <laughs> I'm already dead, mother! He clobbers the mummy <laughs> with his newly acquired staff. The mummy gongs, Sertia. In the noggin, with the Oof. blunt of the shovel, and then back swings Cass in the ribs. Oy. Cass inhales sharply, <clears throat> beat, waiting for the inevitable pain. But instead, the shovel's necropatic, necro, necrotic, excuse me, necrotic power heals him, sealing up the previous gaping wound. Mm. Mm, good God! You see that? That's useful. <laughs> it's good to be dead. Not so dead. Somewhat de church dead. <laughs> <laughs> we could be mummy slayers. Oh, come on! <laughs> the shovel side sweeps Cast on the side of the face, releasing dizzy words. Oh. Pay attention, I can feel blood in you, silly, you silly. She whacks the mummy with Beatrice, to no effect. What are you doing? Oh, I thought I'd check. <sighs> but Heidi parries the shovel strike. Grapple it! It's on fire! You grapple it! <laughs> I don't really know what that means. Uh, what? Grapple. Grapple I is, grapple. uh, means to grab someone. Okay, um, okay. Uh, in combat. Oops. I don't like it's, a grappling. Wrestling. It's like somebody swing a sword, you move in and try and wrestle them. Oh. That's grappling. Okay. It can also include pushing, shoving, that sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. And disarm means to take somebody's weapon away. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right. Or their arm. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Disarm it then. She tries to disarm the shovel, but the mummy has a death grip on the graver's dig. Archibald ducks, crouches onto one knee. Is there an actual song that this is sung to the sound of, or do I have to make one up? Well, the actual song is Blue Oyster Cult, A City's on Fire. City's on Fire? I need to listen to that, okay. Yeah, yeah. Can you, can, can you give me like what this sounds yeah. like? I'm just curious. My heart is black, my lips are cold. Mummy's on flame with rock and roll. My heart is black and my lips are cold. Mummy's on flame with rock and roll. He pumps a volley of eldritch blasts into the mummy's underbury. Very under oh, underbury. Oh, I like the underbury. Right into his underbury. Right, right into the underbelly. Do not want to get hit in the underbury. I mean, after you're a, a male mummy. Yeah, just edges from the bunghole. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they remove everything and they replace it with 
So it makes sense. Underbreakers. <laughs> Undead. Underbreak. The mummy disappears into a sucking cloud of flame and ash. The graver's dig shovel hits the ground with a clatter. Fade to black. Complete darkness. Shadows of death draped overnight. Harmonic rumbles shake the ground beneath the pyramid. We hear heavy breathing, movement, clatter of weapons. <coughs> Everyone all right? Warn us next time before you start ladle tapping, eh? The lights slowly return. The only part of the mummy remaining is a white skeletal hand wrapped around the shovel's handle and a lapis lazuli necklace. Oh, my bow, he is not here. The sword. <laughs> Are you sure, Beatrice? Sirs consoles Beatrice, slowly stroking the blade. We are, we are gravers, right? Your point. We are alive, mostly. The monster's defeated. I say we call it a day, loot this place, and make scarce. Cass picks up the shovel. It's time to find that fakin skull. Aye, I hear that, brother. Archibald <laughs> picks up the blue necklace. Bahati reaches into the empty sarcophagus and pulls out a shiny, keen longsword. Curses be damned. Mm. Fade to black. That is episode three. Our script read for actor Roki. Thank you all for coming back. I'm always really happy when they come back. <laughs> Almost anybody will come the first time, but return act returning actors, those are the ones you want. Uh, and, I, and they're so lovely and excellent. excellent. It, was, it was great doing this with you. Thank, and I Thank look you. forward to uh, filming. Yeah. Uh, and I look forward to you hopefully watching us on Actoroki again on Gen Con TV here on Gen Con TV. That's right. Wednesday is 6 p.m. Pacific time is when we stream. Uh, one week from tonight, we will have the movie, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, I won't repeat the beginning credits with the ending credits at the end of the movie. Um, and everything will be just great. Peachy King, fabulous, wonderful. And please follow us on all of our social media at World of Chaldea Places. And uh, watch all of our other Gen Con TV shows too. We've got some great ones like Sarah's Table, uh, Fridays at 5 p.m. Pacific. Yeah. Table Takes with moi and Javion and Bonsai and Noor. Fridays at 2 p.m. Well, Star Trek, something else. Like oh, yeah, we have Star Trek. We it won't be this Friday, but next Friday, I will be GMing Star Trek again. No. We have Nerbotry on Sundays. Mm -hmm. We have Out of Character on Tuesdays. We have Blood on the Clock Tower on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Uh, Rem Thursdays. Yeah, thank you. Thursdays and Roll with Rem Alternus on and, Thursdays. Uh, I'll and actually be featured in Nerbotry for a three three week run uh, <gasps> leading up to a Gen Con. So it'll be a different character. It won't be Saoirse, but uh, wow. I'll be uh, popping in as a cleric. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Sunny Excellent. Yeah. fair weather the fifth. All right. <laughs> we broke that right here on Actor Roki. That's right. All right. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. Good night and have a Robert pleasant tomorrow. Stomper, bumper, bumper, boo. Woo.